Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Welcome to the April meeting of the Hudson School Board. Uh, first up, we have several recognitions. Um, so, mean, Sandy, I turn this over to you, and we've got the State Science Olympiad All right, thank first. you. Yes, while Mr. Anderson and our Science Olympiad participants come up t toward the mic, he'll help assist us here. I'll share a little bit. The mission of the Wisconsin Science Olympiad is to promote STEM education for students in Wisconsin K-12 schools through the challenge of science, technology, engineering, and math competition. This is the fourth year of offering Science Olympiad at Hudson Middle School, the third year of competition, and it has expanded from 12 students the first year to 30 students this year. We are also pleased to share that a high school team was also established this year. With us this evening is Matt Anderson, Science Olympiad coach and members of the team who will share the various competitions we competed in at the state tournament held in March and our impressive results. So students, if you would please state your name, what competition or challenge you were in, and then it looks like there's some medal around a lot of your necks, so if there is some medals that you won, we'd love to hear about that too. M maybe their grade also. Would be Pardon? Good. Maybe their grade. Grade, so, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Name, grade, and your competitions. <laughs> and you have to step up close to that microphone. Okay, I'm Channing Miller, I'm in eighth grade, and I participated in the Booma Lever, which I got second in state and um, write it do it which I got sixth in state and um, herpetology which I also got second in state and um, <laughs> what's that? So many events. Yeah. Yeah. And you also throw in admirably in other events. So. Oh and experimental design which I got fifth in state too. <laughs> <laughs> yes and I filled in for events too. Um, my name is Ingrid Holter. I am in eighth grade. I participated in Ride It, Do It with Channing, and I got sixth place. I did Roller Coaster, which we took third place in, and then I did Picture This and Heredity, which we got ninth place in. My name is Isabel Laurel. I'm also in eighth grade, and I participated at State in Aerial Scramble. We got sixth place. Um, circuit Lab, we got sixth place, and also Density, which we also placed sixth place in. Um, my name is Gray Anderson, and I um, uh, am in sixth grade. Um, I participated in five events at State, and I got a medal in Thermodynamics, which I got fifth place. My name is Shove Johnny. I'm in sixth grade, and I participated in, wait. Okay, so I participated in anatomy and physiology, which we got, I think, 16th place with my brother. He's over there. <laughs> and then in Dynamic Planet, we got sixth place also with my brother. And then in Disease Detectives with my brother, we got third place, yeah. And then in Fossils, also with my brother, we got third place again. And in Code Busters, we got first place, and that was with Dylan and my brother. And that was also our first ever uh, state championship, so Dylan was on that team. Hello, I'm Dylan Sias. I'm a seventh grader. Uh, what I competed in state win was Code Busters, which I got first, and Meteorology, which I got sixth. Uh, uh, I'm Shlok Johnny. I participated at State for Science Olympiad in four events. Yeah, wait, no, five events. Five events. I did anatomy and physiology with my brother. Well, all my events were with my brother, actually. <laughs> so, anatomy and physiology, fossils, we got third in. Disease structures, we got third in. Dynamic planet, we got fifth in. And core busters, we got first in. So, that's pretty good. My name is Preston Jensen. I'm in seventh grade, and in 
the most recent one. I was in Circuit Lab, Dynamic Planet, Battery Buggy, and Solar System. And in Circuit Lab, I got sixth place. And then at the one before that, I got three, but I forgot what they were for. <laughs> Yep, so we took uh, fifth overall, and we had 40 total medals. Uh, one thing that uh, Schloch missed, he had 27 career medals in middle school. So, uh, And then we have a lot of eighth graders that are, will be graduating to the high school team here next year. So keep the uh, momentum going. Thank you so much. Very impressive. Any comments or questions from anyone at the board? Go ahead, Rob. Just, a, a, I guess, a quick question. First off, thermodynamics. Really? <laughs> um, but uh, question on, what is aerial scramble? We, um, basically, we get a kit and we have to prepare it. We plan it at home and we figure out what's the best way and our longest flight time is the goal. And then upon arriving, you get a fresh new kit and you have to scramble in, I think, 30 minutes to recreate what you did at home. Um, they had a screw up with state where you got to bring a pre-prepared pre one, so we were able to have an advantage. Um, ours did, however, crash into the back of a kid, so that was <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a setback, but it, it still worked out. But, yeah, so. Wow, you kids crushed it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you all for your competition. Thank you. Next, we want to announce that the Hudson School District was notified that we have received the 2019 Best Communities for Music Education Award. The award program recognizes outstanding efforts by teachers, administrators, parents, students, and community leaders who have made music education part of a well-rounded education. Designations are made to districts and schools that demonstrate an exceptionally high commitment and access to music education. The district first applied in 2005, and to the best of our knowledge, we have been recognized 11 out of the last 15 years. We can all be very proud of the outstanding music programs in our schools and community. Congratulations. And then next, PLTW Distinguished High School. We're excited to share that for the second year in a row, Hudson High School has been recognized as a Project Lead the Way Distinguished High School for increasing access, engagement, and achievement in our PLTW programs. We are extremely proud of this award from an organization with national reach and presence. Hudson is one of just 114 high schools across the country and just one of eight in Wisconsin to receive this recognition. And as far as we can tell, we're the only high school in Wisconsin that received it two years in a row. Congratulations to our engineering, biomedical, and computer science teachers. All right, and we have another recognition, and that is for uh, one of our own on here on the board, uh, Bruce Hansen, um, was uh, recognized and uh, for achieving level one as far as from the Wisconsin Association of School Boards. So I'm going to give that to Bruce, and this is your award. Congratulations! Thank you. A lot of board members take six years to get their first one. <laughs> <laughs> Took yeah. Three. Right, it is a certificate suitable for framing, right. yes. <laughs> but no, we, we've got uh, now several school board members that have, you know, um, achieved, uh, you know, that, that level and uh, hopefully we'll continue to climb. We try to encourage uh, development of all our board members. So anyway, congratulations, Bruce. Thank you. All right, next up we have requests to speak. Do we have anyone? I think so. All right. Moving on to superintendent's report, hear from Dr. Olette on his reports. I thought the kids would have stuck around to hear me talk about an impending snow day on Thursday, but uh, <laughs> it's not on, the, not on the agenda tonight. Um, but we are, are watching the storm that's supposedly coming at the end of this week. Um, April 2nd, school board election results. Uh, uh, Tim uh, created a tally sheet. It's a draft, obviously. They're the unofficial. Uh, results, so we don't want people thinking that uh, this is the actual canvassed results, which actually happened tomorrow. Is that correct, Tim? Correct. Uh, and that will be right here at the district office. And do we have a time for that, if anybody wants to attend? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock here at the district office. 
uh, which will actually require, I think, uh, Jamie to appoint um, a clerk, because our, our Carrie, who's our clerk, is unable to make the, uh, she's not able to be here tonight, and she also- All right, and be, since we're on that point, it's on your um, part of your report. Uh, Sue, is that something that you could fill in for Carrie since she's okay, what, out of state? What, when again? It'd be tomorrow at night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We want to give you plenty of advance notice. I yeah. Think you, yeah. You have uh, at least 15 hours. I'll just check it out on my new iPhone. And oh. <laughs> yeah, this is, it was kind of a, a last minute thing that uh, took uh, Carrie away. So. Yes. Right. Yeah, I, I can do that. You can make that work. Yeah. All right. So then, um, that's the honor you get to do is stand by the canvas, but then you also can act as clerk for tonight's closed, uh, okay. closed See, session. Make up about so. 70 votes for me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> There's, uh, uh, so uh, good, good turnout in the election. Um, and uh, again, there's not a need to, to count who got more or to, to dwell on that point. <laughs> Uh, you know, but, but Jamie did have more votes than Bruce, but Bruce is the all-time vote-getter of uh, school board elections back in 2016, as he reminds us. So, questions no, about... I, that's why I called for two out of three, so <laughs> I'll take that. So, uh, questions about the election. Okay, uh, retreat policy governance, just kind of an update on where we're at with things. Again, uh, the May 28th work session, it's a Tuesday, if you remember, uh, because uh, Memorial Day is on Monday. Um, Jamie and I will be having a conference call here in the next uh, week or so with Drew Howick to kind of discuss some things, some feedback we get some re from Rob, too, at the National School Board Convention, um, and also the kind of the feedback we've had from the board through the policy governance discussion as far as the book is uh, that the board's been doing. Uh, and then also then I think we settled on the date of June 8th, I think, is that right? Am I saying that right? In the morning of June 8th for the board uh, retreat, um, and that is a Saturday morning. Uh, I told all the cabinet members they need to be there and tentative. No, actually, it'll just be the board and myself uh, because uh, it's Saturday morning and uh, <laughs> it's a board retreat, so there's not a, not a reason to have them there. Um, so that, that is set up, and so as we get more details flushed out, um, we'll get those out. But I know we'll be having that conference call here coming up. Uh, the last thing I have on there uh, is the staff recognition banquet. And uh, you can see the, um, if you could RSVP to the Human Resources Office. Um, I know Jamie had asked if there was an email or a uh, phone number. Um, we, if you know, you can let Andrew know. She can write it down. And, and uh, I already turned mine in to Tim. So. You, you get a gold yeah. star for being the first right. one. And, oh, um, wait a minute. He's oh, in front oh. of the class, too, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Sue got I it in first. two gold stars. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, this is like vote counting. Um, so it will be on Monday, April 29th. Um, a social hour at 5, the welcome and dinner at 545, and program to follow. Um, we have a, a wonderful uh, list of staff members that, that have had tremendous experience in our district. Obviously, we have staff members that are retiring that uh, obviously we hate to see them go, but uh, are excited for them and their next step uh, in, their, in their life and what they're planning on doing. Um, so it should be, it's always an enjoyable night. Uh, well done, and Andrew's department puts it on it. It's... Uh, really, really well received. Do we, not to put anybody on the spot, but I guess if we, is anybody, do we know if anybody can't be there for that night? I tentatively am traveling right now to North Carolina. To the Hudson House? Tentatively traveling, not mm -hmm. to the Hudson House, no. Maybe um, a detour Yes. North Carolina? Well, we could see if we could do some type of web thing That's with you up there. Um, saying, mm -hmm. you know, congratulations <laughs> everybody in like a big picture of Bruce. <laughs> up there. Well, I have plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some construction photos we could use. Um, I'll so let you know. I'll <laughs> let you know. If, I'm, if I don't travel, then I'll be around. Not a problem. So if you could just Perfect. get back to Andrea or the HR office, or you can email me and I can let her know as well. Um, but with that being said, that is the, the superintendent reports uh, for right now. All right. Any questions? Hearing none, um, we got other report. We have uh, 
Rob Brown, who's fresh back from Philadelphia. Well, actually, by about seven days, but uh, who's I counting? Seven days. Uh, yeah. And so um, Rob's got a short presentation. I don't know if you were able to see it. It was uploaded, and it's got a few slides to go over. So. Yeah, just uh, just quick. It was uh, it was absolutely fantastic. You know, whether it was seven days, Philly cheesesteaks were as good as I remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all in all, it was, a, it was a very good conference, and, and to be able to meet school board members from across the nation was absolutely fantastic, especially those uh, in the surrounding states. And uh, if you don't mind, Tim, next slide. So, quick uh, overview. You know, there were sort of two key things that I, that I focused on in governance and leadership track to spend a little bit of time on that topic here in a little bit, but uh, also spent some time in what they called study halls. So, in between sessions, we had about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to visit with um, sometimes vendors, sometimes folks that didn't have an hour and 15 minutes of uh, collateral or information to share. So And so uh, the, the first one that I participated in was this um, uh, item on tobacco use. And we had, gosh, about a month or two ago, we talked a little bit about e-cigarettes and tobacco use in general within our, uh, the middle school and high school here. And uh, ultimately across the nation, you know, a couple things that I learned, 21% of all middle school and high school students are using tobacco of some sort. And just goes to, you know, uh, reiterate some of the things that we talked about earlier. And in 2018, over the last couple of decades, that was the first time that cigarette use actually increased in middle school and high school. Little, uh, little eye-opening there. But CVS Pharmacy, um, they've allocated tens of millions of dollars in resources to school districts across the state. And if we choose, we can register our schools. And they even start as early as elementary age, um, making them aware, getting in front of the concern that bubblegum flavored tobacco isn't necessarily a good thing and how to say no and how to help their peers also say no. Uh, from the middle school, high school perspective, there are tools that are available, online tools, as well as uh, other handouts and curriculum that are available, again, free to our district by school. If we choose to participate, I sent a handout around and I do have uh, an email that Nick I'll share with you of a gal who said that she'd be more than happy to uh, work with us if we, if we so chose. So the next slide, talk a little bit about the uh, policy governance and uh, leadership track. You know, the, we talked a lot about policy governance but also about how strategic planning goes hand in hand with that policy governance piece. And for greatest success, looking at how do we go about leveraging our community at the same time we're working amongst ourselves to change, frankly, how we, how we lead the district? Um, our strategic plan is um, something we've been talking about for some time. And ultimately, the more that we engage our community, the more that we'll be able to uh, truly have something that will uh, represent our, uh, the, the taxpayers. All right, next slide. When we talk about agendas, and agendas, as we've talked about with the book that we're looking through, will continue, will, will change, or should change, based on the book. Um, and this is a, a slide or some information that came from a slide that really stood out to me. From an agenda standpoint, typically 25 to 33 percent of any agenda is based on stuff that we're covering 80, 90 percent today. Uh, strategic planning, once we have that in line with our community, we'll spend two-thirds to three-quarters of our time on what does uh, uh, programming look like? How are we educating our kids in our classrooms? What do our classrooms look like? Culture, equity, um, other items that are important to our community that frankly we don't spend a lot of time talking about today. Next slide, this coherent versus policy governance. And something that I've learned is that um, just recently in this book that's noted on the slide, uh, just came out in 2019, there are uh, two, perhaps three books that have come between the book that we're looking at now and this particular book. And there are best practices, um, lessons learned from other districts, and what this does is it actually helps us go through best practices and look at 
um, real life examples and challenges, things that we haven't even talked about yet that might help us as we continue to move forward with our work moving towards um, policy governance. And so, and the last item here that's important is that every school district, every board has its own culture. And it's important to remember that the culture is based on our community. Um, as boards and superintendents change, many times in many districts, that culture tends to change as well. The direction of the district tends to change. But if we uh, embrace the information that we're talking about and put this strategic plan in place and this governor approach looking at the will of our uh, community, regardless of changes in the school board as elections come and go, um, leaders come and go, ultimately that culture will continue to remain the same. And last slide. I met a, a school district, a couple of folks from a school district in uh, DeForest. DeForest is near Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, they, have, they started with policy governance, actually the book that we're starting with now, and uh, had a bunch of success. And then about five years ago, changed to this um, Coherence Governance, which is his book on the last slide. And from their perspective, it was a night and day difference, much more applicable to how they wanted to work with their community, um, much more involved from a strategic standpoint, and uh, Frank was much more um, um, appropriate for how they wanted to lead their community. And um, they were very much interested in if we had interest in um, a joint retreat, and again, just a thought, um, they'd love to talk about best practices, they'd love to talk about sharing challenges, potential solutions to those challenges, Something else that's pertinent is uh, Chippewa Falls is also a coherent governance district. And so I think Nick knows Heidi Iliopoulos. Uh, that might be, given how close they are, another good district to uh, talk with as well. Right. So, and with that, that is the uh, end of my report. All right. Thanks, Rob, for sharing. Any questions for Rob? But we always appreciate, um, you know, I went to last year's national convention and hopefully now where is it the next year do you know i think they said denver but i don't know that for sure okay i think it was new orleans the year before but we had something come up that we couldn't make that but um it's good to get different areas did they happen to get more people from the east coast similar down in texas it seemed like there was more school districts presenting that were from the texas area which sometimes their laws aren't always you know, consistent with ours, but was it more Eastern, East Coast oriented or? Several of the um, events that I went to were led by Minnesota. There was one led by Wisconsin from a policy governance perspective. Um, another was led by Colorado. Okay. Um, and I've, I've got all the collateral from all the courses that I went to, so certainly I'll share it with everybody. Yeah, they have other states, like when we were in Texas, there was, Anoka was leading one, um, so. Yeah, that's good to get ideas from other places. And uh, so I think we'll be able to talk about that more, both at our work session in May and then um, our retreat and see what direction we go with um, you know, some of these ideas. We haven't finished our first book discussion yet, but um, you know, we look forward to seeing where this can take us. So we always want to look for improvement. It ends up Chicago? Yeah, All right. So that is close. Hopefully we can get uh, some board members going in. Do we know a date on that, Tim? April 4th to 6th. Oh, okay. I like San Antonio in March better than Chicago <laughs> yeah, on April 4th. But Chicago, all right, San Diego, uh, that's good. Um, all right, well, we'll um, take, maybe take advantage of the close proximity. Um, hearing no other questions then for Rob, I move on to uh, Topics for action, and I would entertain a motion on the consent agenda items pursuant to the language um, and the dollar amount. Move approval of the consent items and that the Chief Financial and Operations Officer be authorized to pay bills in the amount of $3,032,869.63. Second. Second. All right, motion by Bruce, second by Bob. All those in favor of the consent agenda items say aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent agenda items are approved. Next up for discussion are the health and dental insurance rates. So it, uh, I mean, if you want to discuss it otherwise, this is the same recommendation that we made to you during your 
uh, board work session administration would recommend uh, these uh, rate increases. We did have a meeting with the Teachers Advisory Committee uh, last week, and uh, they thought these looked pretty good, uh, all things considered, with health and dental rates and everything else. Uh, we'll also be putting together kind of a, uh, a health and dental kind of committee to start to look at how we can start uh, getting on the front end of some of the increases that may be coming down and how we can address some of that stuff. So this is the administration's recommendation. Mr. President? Yes. Move to approve the health and dental insurance rates as proposed for 2019-2020. Second. All right. Motion has been made. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Next up are the 2019-2020 uh, wage and salary increase proposal that was discussed at the last work session. Yep, so you continue to have the recommendation from the administration. It's the same recommendation we made for you at the work session. It'd be a 2.5 increase uh, for the board approved increase for wages and salaries for all employees, other than employees that have received a significant discipline uh, or employees that are currently subject to a performance improvement plan or if they've uh, received notice from the supervisor that they're going on a improvement plan. So the administration's recommendation is uh, continues to be what it was in uh, two weeks ago. Mr. President, <clears throat> yes. I recommend that we approve the 2019-20 wage and salary recommendations. Second. Do we need to state what the, that, that it's a 2.5? All right. Recommending the 2.5 increase for wage rates and salaries for eligible staff members. Okay. Is there a, that's been the motion then, and uh, Bruce, you second it? Is that right? Yes. All right. All right. Um, and again, this was as explained, as shown on there, that um, we've followed the CPI pretty closely over the last five, six years, and the C current CPI is 2.44%. So is there any other further questions on this point? All right, with that, um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Those opposed, motion passes. Final item on the action items is to select a delegate to be able to go to the annual convention of the third CESA. This is, um, this is I think, the highlight of the evening. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know if we need to do this by secret ballot because I know multiple ones, uh, multiple board members want to do this, but we do need to select a, a member. I think last year, did Rob, did you do it or Bruce do it? One of, I think. I did it two years ago. Two years ago. Did you do it last year? I think Rob went last year. Um, you know, so uh, it is a meeting that takes place, I think, uh, June 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, it's in Turtle Lake. It's not down in Madison, so. Any takers? And this is actually uh, statutorily required to be on our yeah. agenda tonight. Yep. So, all right. Rob said that he would do it. Is there anyone else interested? All right. Is there a second? So we need somebody to nominate. Yeah. Him and then a Can second? we have somebody make a nomination then? I'll nominate uh, Rob Brown to represent us at the CISO 11 Annual Convention, June 3rd. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Now I entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to the language uh, quoted. You're the man, Rob. Uh, the board will entertain a motion, let's see, pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Pair 1, Parent C, to discuss uh, and take action if appropriate regarding the employment and performance evaluation data of public employees over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Consideration of certified and administrative staff employment, resignation, retirement, and or preliminary notice of contract or renewal. Uh, and B, pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 1985, Parent 1, Parent E, to discuss contract negotiations with construction contractors whenever competitive reasons require a closed session. And C, pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 1985, Parent 1, Parent G, to confer with legal counsel who is rendering written advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation. There's, all right, there's a second. It calls for a roll call vote. Bauman? Aye. 
Brown? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Katas? Aye. Loglin? Aye. Johnson? Aye. The motion passes, and we are now going to convene in <clears throat> closed session once the room is cleared. Thank you.